Previously, on the Horde of the Dragon Queen. The north of Faerun finds itself embroiled in chaos, as the long benign cult of the dragon has recently made a resurgence, and is actively pillaging nearby lands at the behest of Seven Sajarin, who is attempting to gather five dragon masks to release Tiamat from her prison in the Nine Hells. Meanwhile, four novice adventurers journey to the town of Greennest as caravan guards for the belligerent Nub Magrub. During said journey, they came to know Nub's bodyguard, Sebastian Crenshaw, and the reserved Marlow Duskwood, who did their best to make the group feel welcome, despite Nub's foul temperament and overt self-interest. The journey was peaceful for a time, but it soon became evident that the group's progress was being observed by an unseen assailant, which was swiftly revealed to be a kobold, thanks to Zark's quick thinking and solid marksmanship. A short while later, the party made camp at a nearby clearing, and made small talk by the campfire, some provided insights into their past, whilst others preferred to keep their peace. They eventually retired for the evening, and Sebastian took first watch. During the night, Delamon discovered a kobold ambush, which caused the party to spring into action. After a short battle, the group discovered that some of the cargo had gone missing and pursued the kobolds to a nearby encampment. Although two ambush drakes stacked the odds against our heroes, they managed to prevail and recover the cargo but they found a note on one of the kobolds' bodies, which suggested that Greenest was about to be attacked. The party made haste to their destination, hoping to arrive before the potential attack, but as they approached Greenest, it was clear that all was not well. Smoke blighted the sky, and the horizon was blanketed in fire, and in the midst of it all was an imposing blue dragon. The party now awestruck, consider their next course of action, but would do well to tread lightly. And now they see, first hand, that the tyranny of dragons has begun. Isn't that the second module? Um, no, Tyranny of Dragons is the name of the overall oh, adventure. The overall, yeah. Um, Rise of Tiamat is the second part of this adventure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good spoiler. Uh, okay. All right. Hello, everyone, and uh, Hi, and uh, welcome back, everyone watching to Horde of the Dragon Queen. Um, so, as I said, since the campaign didn't immediately crash and burn, we're back for a second session. So, as the intro just said, we are now just outside of Greenest. The party have come up to the edge of the town and they can see that there is smoke coming from the ground and the horizon is blanketed in fire. And there is a large blue dragon. So, upon seeing this scene, how do you guys react? Oh. Uh... Right. Did you say the uh, the cart we're in is like covered with tarp? Uh, yes, it is. But bearing in mind this dragon is quite far away, it's just due to the size of it. You can see it from where you are. I'm just wondering if I could see it from inside the cart. Um, the dragon directly in the town, or is it still beyond the town? Okay, so it's kind of towards the center of town it's just sort of circling above at the moment it seems to be circling in one particular area but you can't really tell exactly what part of town it is from here and without really knowing green sd selves you couldn't really make a guess based on your own knowledge what is exactly going on in the town um, you're quite far away, so you would have to actually head down into the town to get a closer look. All you can see from here. Are we down on the town? Well, I mean, as I say, the town is still a little bit away. Um, I'm just trying to think how how high this hill is. My head, really. I mean, I think just because there's so much smoke as well, it's probably obscuring your vision a little bit. 
Okay. I'm going to go out and then. Who's is there anyone the else around, or is it only us? Um, I'm actually going to switch the map at this stage. Who's sat in the cart with me? Um, I'll actually switch uh, the map over just so you can actually see what's uh, going on here. So, I haven't uh, got uh, Green Est on this map, but this is kind of like the area that you're in at the moment. So, essentially, the cart's been moved off to the side a little bit, just so it's a little bit sheltered. And uh, you guys are stood with Sebastian and Marla, uh, nubs, over by the cart. Okay, I've got some. It's like too late. It says looking over at the, where the dragon is, pointing. Okay. So, are you, did you going to say something, Gartha? Uh, have you seen any sign of other people? No, not yet. You're kind of, you're, as far as you know, you're up here alone. So, just to describe this terrain a little bit better, this part here is elevated. That's kind of what I was using uh, these rocks to depict. So I think uh, when so Sebastian. Oh, something elevated to the left of us, but we're still off to above town? Um, it the town is in the valley below us? It's kind of like the way I kind of picture it in my mind is that you've got a little bit of land that slopes up to here and then it kind of slopes back down on the other side. Yeah, I've got to be honest, I'm not really much of a geography person, so this is probably a bit haphazard, so I uh, do apologise for that. I think I kind of envisage that the town, like the overlook was a little bit away from Green Est and you would have to go down a hill in order to actually get into the town. That's kind of how I pictured it in my head anyway. Yeah. So, Sebastian, are we moving towards town? We're all out of the cart now, we all see this going on. Okay, uh, Sebastian is going to see the scene, hear your question and say, I think that I need to stay here with Nub to protect him. There's no way that we're going to be able to get the cargo into town as it is. Considering that Greenness is on fire, there's probably quite a lot of conflict down there. We don't know if there's anything aside from the dragon attacking at the moment. We could probably expect, at the very least, for there to be more kobolds. And Marlo, <sighs> Marlo has been to Green Nest once before, so he should know the way to the keep. But I can't run the risk of leaving the cargo unattended. As much as I want to just come along and help you guys, I think I have to stay here. So you I'm end up uh... staying behind, at least. Uh, what was that, sorry? Are we still bound by our contract to protect your cart? Yes, however, I do feel that we do, we're not going to be able to press ahead as, as it is. I think, ideally, we would want to push down together, but Nob isn't a combatant, and frankly, and he kind of like looks over enough to just see if he's out of it. Like he's just a complete liability. He has no means to protect himself. Whilst this conversation has been going on, I have started to move forward. I wanted to get a closer look at the town. Okay. Um, so I would probably say that if you're going sort of down towards the town, uh, I would probably just say make a general perception check because you are still somewhat away, but I'm guessing that you're going a little bit down the hill so you get a better look. Uh, okay, with a 10, let me just see what you can probably see from there. I have a perception check too. I stood with it. Okay, I would say that even on a 10, you would be able to tell that on a close inspection, you can see that the fires aren't really coming from the houses in the town. It's coming more from the haystacks and barns. They're kind of clumped together, so it's quite conspicuous. It seems like there's attempts being made to, to start fires elsewhere, but those are the only structures that you can see burning at the moment. Um, 
I think that's all I'll give you on a turn. Are those fire? But that look, it looks like they're burning uh, the barns. We uh, do we see the color of the dragon from this distance? I described it as a blue dragon because there was like a, a streak of light as you approached. No. You could kind of like the dragon's big enough, and there was just about enough light for you to see. Um, just generally as well, I want to clarify that it's around about nine o'clock at night at the moment, so the sun is just about to go down, but the fires are giving you more visibility than you normally have. I moved up behind the two of them, but a little to the side, a little. Okay, I'll follow. In, in tree coverage. It makes no sense. So, um, as you guys move up, uh, Sebastian will follow you and he'll say, you probably don't want to walk directly through the front door. He kind of motions his thumb over to this area here. I would recommend taking that side path. It's a little bit more sheltered, and if anything else is coming into Greennest, you'll be able to see them before they see you. We can't rule out the possibility that there might be more reinforcements on the way. Malu, Sebastian mentioned you know the town. Do you know this pass? Um, Are you familiar with it? Yes. Um, Sebastian pointed that out to me when I was here last time. Um, I must be honest, I sort of I've only walked it with him one time as we were leaving, but I do believe that I know the way sort of into green nest from here. I mean, it, it kind of just reconvenes with the path, but a little bit further down. Uh, I would probably say that Sebastian is right. So we probably want to try and draw as little attention to ourselves as possible. And I'll unswing my able? crossbow. Take his Are advice. Are you able to find this pass if it is unclear? Do you remember enough of that? Um, well, I mean, it's literally just over to the side where Sebastian mentioned. I suppose it's just more that there's no reason for most travellers to go that way because there's quite a lot of debris. It doesn't really make for a wise path for carts. So if we saw any more of those drakes, for example, they probably wouldn't be able to move very well up there. I mean, I suppose really, on the other hand, we there could be people up there, but... I would say that, based on the notes that we found, they probably want to do what the kobolds were doing, s smuggling treasure. It would probably make more sense for them to stick to the roads. So it's going on evening time, but we are rested, right? Yes. So it's not like we are getting close to exhaustion. No. So that's why I gave you the long what rest. The yeah, so basically, in the time between the end of the last, sorry, the battle that you had and now, you basically spent the day resting. Because you were just basically sat in the cart or. So, yeah, while it is nighttime, we are still fresh enough to Correct. Pa walk on or yep. fight or whatever for several hours. Yes. Yep. So yeah, so. Good. I just wanted to check on that. No, so just to clarify, no. There's no penalties for the time of day it is. I'm just basically telling you that for flavor. But functionally, you guys are basically like you've just gotten up in the morning in terms of the game. Like, you'll be fine to just carry on as you are. Okay, so with uh, Sebastian and Marlo's argument made, what do you guys do? I'm just staring at this dragon attack, puzzling. I'm... I'm... Enraptured by it. Sort of muttering to myself. I look back over everyone. I think a little, little sigh. Come on. Let's go and see if we can help. Yeah. Marlo will start moving over towards the pass. And he's kind of like, he passes Zark and he just uh, motions him to follow. Zark hit big drink. Good. What do you just know of dragon? Oh. Okay. Um, oh, wait right. for me! Actually, just before you leave, uh, Sebastian goes to Marlow. Marlow, I noticed in the last combat, you didn't pick up your arrows, did you? Oh, 
No, I, I don't suppose I did. Marlow, you need to make sure that these people are guided into town. I know that I told them that it's just to make way for the cargo, but I can't sit by and just watch lives be put in danger. They need to... I don't know if they can do anything. I haven't really seen them fight, but just get yourselves out of the way and me and Nob will be fine. I'll just haul up at the side here and just make ourselves scarce before something passes. Uh, I'm just hoping that none of the food has gone off by now. We, I mean, the crates were opened. I don't know if it's going to be a smell. Oh, I'll just have to hope that nothing notices us. And with that, uh, Sebastian goes to join Nob. Okay, and uh, Marlow will leave, and he will go up the pass. Okay, so are you guys kind of like moving up there? Yeah. Okay, so you guys start to move up the pass as you get to... So I assume you kind of just continue to walk along there. Yes. Uh, yep. As you get to the edge of the pass, you notice, sort of quite true to what Sebastian feared, there are some kobolds using this path. Um, one of them is riding an ambush drake, and it's got a box of loot on its back, and it's being flanked by two kobolds. And they're just slowly down, moving down the path. Are they and moving like that, towards the way? The high ground on them, right? the way so, going? yes. So, as Marlow explained, they're looking straight ahead, and this is quite elevated. So, unless they're really standing at about here, they would have to crane to see you guys. And if you're kind of all the way back, they won't have line of sight on you. So, these guys continue to. Objects, sorry. These guys continue to move forward, and when they get to about this spot, the ambush drake suddenly starts jerking about and starts um, sort of like jerking towards this direction. It kind of just stops moving. So, upon seeing this, the kobolds start to look around and they start moving in the general direction of here. So when Marlow sees this, he just goes, oh, oh, oh no, the, the drake must have smelt the food that Sebastian mentioned. Oh, 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 oh no, uh, what are we going to do here? He kind of just starts uh, panicking a little bit. Don't just stand red. there. Shoot! On that one. Use flame. Throw it at the one that's furthest to the south on the map. Okay, so which one are you shooting at, Arthur? This one. This one? Okay. Right, so let me just. Um... Are we all allowed to make an attack? Uh, Before an issue I, would, I would say that you have a surprise round considering your position. So, um, yep, 21 will hit Arthur. Could you roll your damage, please? Okay, two damage. Okay, that is down to three. And uh, okay, what else are you? Who else is making an attack? Um, I'll, I'll I'm going to jump on the track. I'm using produce flame and directly hurling it at the front guy. So by the front guy, you referring to this cobalt? Mm, wrong tab. Yes, that one. The one furthest to the south. The one All right. that's on the, still middle on the road and the furthest to. So, yeah, okay, one. make your roll then. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, it kicked me out of it's okay. D and D Beyond and Roll Twenty at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just taking a second. I don't know how to delete what I drew. I meant to do the line. wrong tool. First okay, that is, that's a good hit. Um, i got to be honest, just roll damage for the sake of it, but I think you got them. <laughs> um, That should be a natural 20. 
Yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, you've killed it. I just want to see by mile march. <laughs> Oh, that, and that's with a nap? I'm guessing. It's already done one damage dice. Ah, right. That's right. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, it's only yeah. one dice. Jesus, okay. Right, okay, so. I'm throwing my javelin at the um, trick. It's oh, yeah. straight 1d8. It's no plus anything, so it would be 6. Right? Uh, uh, which uh, crit is it, options are is we it, using? Are we is doubling it? damage dice? That's huge. Well, there's three different versions. There's oh, max okay. damage and roll your dice. There's two rolling of dice, and there's um, what was the other one? What do you Doubling usually do, Dim? Oh, yeah. double the roll. You're the DM, bug. Your choice. It's up to you. I'm just, I'm so just... the three is a straight roll. There's nothing added to it. That's a straight single. I would say roll for... I would say double dice for simplicity. Okay, so roll another damage okay. dice then. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> the discussion. It, it's all you needed. Um, this one is dead. Okay. And uh, Zach, you're saying that you feel better for last. Yeah. And you're throwing your javelin, did you say? Yeah, I'm throwing my javelin at the amber strike. Throwing your javelin at the amber strike. Okay, roll your attack, please. It does advantage because it's fourteen. Well, 40 meters away. Um, I mean, the map's to scale, so. Okay, let me just check his AC. I'm, yeah, uh, 19 will hit. Okay, and roll damage. Two. Six, even, so I've got I was just about to say that well. was completely different from what I actually saw. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, six. Awesome. Okay, um, anyone, so I suppose um, Bala will also take a shot at, um, probably at the back one, just because it's still alive at present, so he'll attack with his longbow. Actually, he's the one character sheet I did not open, so let me just uh, grab him. Literally a tab for everything else except for Bala. I, I forget him even, in the preparation. I don't know how to del delete the line I did. Okay, unfortunately, Marlo does not have. Yeah, that's him, probably. Right, okay. In that case, um, once you make your attacks, the the guys are still alive. They see one of their friends just get burned to death and just fall on the ground lifeless. Uh, one of them takes an arrow through the knee. And the ambush drake looks quite annoyed as its tail is is struck also by a javelin. Uh, they look up towards the ridge, and I don't think they're going to be able to scale it. So uh, at this point, I would probably say that combat is started, and I'm going to roll initiative. So um, as I discussed off stream, I've just got my tool to do that for also, us. Also, I just checked the distance was 30 feet and that I also checked that in, in the map it's 30 feet to that goblin. Okay. okay so... Sorry, I didn't realize before. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I didn't check before the, the spell, but I checked after. And... Right. Okay, so the order has been rolled, so um, according to this, I should have probably... You know what, I'll... Uh, uh, yes, we don't on. need to roll initiative. Yeah, because I've already you got were, the tool on here. Buck is doing that in his tool. Oh, so okay. Buck is doing the initiative for everyone who's involved in combat. Okay, so the initiative is as follows. Ambush Drake, Marlow, Arthur, Gwen, um, Cole, one of the two, uh, Cobo 3, which I believe is this one down here. Um, Cobo 2, which is one above it. Uh, one of them is already dead. Uh, Delamon and then Zark. Okay, and uh, with that, uh, let's begin. So, uh, Ambush... did you roll me in? What was that say? Did you roll me in that one? What did I roll you? Let me just double check. Uh, I rolled you a four. Okay. You weren't in that one. Uh, Delman got an, a four as well, but he beat you on Dax. 
Okay, uh, let me actually just uh, start the battle music. Boop, boop, boop. Should have had music on before, but never mind, I forgot. Uh, just turn it up a touch. There we go. Right, okay, so the. What was it, too much? Bit much. Yeah. You, can, you can actually turn it down on your own audio master slider, but I'll just knock it down again for now. Is that okay? See. Mm -hmm. Can we? Uh, yeah, but I I'll go over it um, when we get to another so when we're off stream. Okay, so uh, the ambush Drake is a little bit confused, so he is just going to start moving down here. So I think he can move forty foot. So can someone just ping that spot for me? Thank you. So he's going to move to here. I uh, can't do anything else this turn. So he's going to end his turn there. Um, okay, so next on the turn Shouldn't order. Shouldn't he move his rider with him? What was it, sorry? Yes, he should. I forgot that he was on his back, thank you. I, sh I should actually group those guys together just so I could remember that. Okay, so they moved together. Okay, and now it's Marlo's turn. Uh, Marlo seeing the ambush drake move away with its kobold rider is going to make an attack on this kobold over here that is now vulnerable, or at least in his opinion is. Okay, so that is an 18, so that hits. I cannot roll damage for some reason. Okay, fine, I'll just roll damage manually. There we go. Okay, so that does six damage. So that will be enough to kill the kobold. All right, so the arrow flies from the longbow and it strikes the kobold straight in the neck, uh, killing it uh, instantly. So let's just get that off there. So, uh, next on the turn order is Arthur. Okay, uh, check my range. Okay, fine. Get 80 foot, so I don't need to worry. I'm going to launch another bolt at uh, this kobold. Okay, pick your roll. 17 hit. Okay, yep, 17 will hit. And free damage, really. Okay, free damage will also hit. I would hope so. So not also hits because I'm looking at the tool at the same time. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm just deducting it. Okay. Um, Reload and in turn. Yeah, so you're just basically striking through the shoulder he winces, but unfortunately is still alive and a little bit uh, peeved with you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Middle finger is the bonus action. Uh, yeah, I'll allow it. <laughs> Okay, and then I've got two, way too many times. Uh, next is uh, Gwen. I'm going to move up, and I need to find a better way to do this. Um, to here. Right, so where are you moving from, Sai? So you kind of move into that spot, okay? Yeah, yeah. Move up to there, so I'm a little closer to the action. Yeah. And then I'm going to repeat what I did last round, just uh, this time I'm trying to hit the drake. So you're trying to hit the drake this time. Okay, uh, roll to hit. Uh, four t Let me just double check. I do believe that does hit. Uh, yes, that hits. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so you kind of like uh, just tinge its underbelly a little bit as it's sort of like... A warm tickle. Yeah, it, you're just giving it a little tickle. I mean, it would probably like that under probably different circumstances. Not too happy, though. Uh, the rider is looking a little bit annoyed because it kind of caused it to jostle a little bit. Okay. <laughs> And uh, with that, it is now the kobold mounted on top of the 
Yeah, right, so um, he will kind of like look up. Um, you're quite near to the edge now, aren't you, Gwen? Yes. He is aiming up at a little bit of an awkward angle, so I'm probably going to have him use a sling, but roll with disadvantage just because it isn't quite ideal. Well, I managed to going to be a little bit back, but still fell as fast. I want to Okay, so in, okay, does an eleven hit? No. Okay, in that case. Both armor class. Yep. Uh, so in that case, uh, the kobold just winces in frustration, and he kind of just um, so like the ropes of the ambush because he kind of just like whips him in frustration. Uh, unfortunately, that is all he can do for his turn. So with that, it is now Delman's turn. Cool. Uh, I'm within range. I'm gonna use frostbite on the kobold. Frostbite on the kobold. Okay. Uh, what's a hit? Uh, it's a. It's a. Uh, you need to make a DC twelve con save. A DC twelve con save. Okay. It's an auto hit. Well, if you fail the save, it's a hit. Yeah. Let me just uh, double check his con. Um, so it'll be plus two. Okay. Uh, just make a custom roll in here real quick. So it'll be a d20 plus two then. Okay, did you say it needed to be a 12? Yep. He does not beat it. Okay, uh, so what's your damage then? Five. Five, five damage to the ambush strike. Okay, let's uh, nod that off. Um, oh, the kobold. The kobold oh, for the kobold. kobold. Sorry, I thought you said the drake. Um, okay, so as you as you sort of move your hand, it kind of sprouts a cone of blue ice, and it just goes towards the cardboard. It shivers for a moment, and then it kind of just falls limp off the ambush drake, and is dead. Okay, uh, do you have I'm anything else? Oh, you're going to move up a little bit. Okay. So in that case, it is now Zach's turn. How steep is this cliff we're on? Um, I'm just trying to think. Considering what I described, um, it kind of like it just slopes up. Um, I don't know. I've got to be honest. I kind of struggle to visualize height. Uh, maybe about 30, 40 feet up. It was kind of like enough for the cobalt to have an awkward time hitting Gwen, even with it being that close. All right. So I probably couldn't jump it then. Um, uh, maybe I'm just. How do we actually handle fall damage? I don't think we've come across that situation before, Doom, have we? Based on weight, for the most part, there's <coughs> no ropes for the fall, fall, fall damage as well. Yeah, I just don't have that to hand. Uh, okay. Uh, for the time being, I would probably. Say, can you make an attack with the hand axe, or do you specifically want to jump onto the ambush drake's back? Now I was just going to try and jump down the cliff and swing at it with my great axe. Um, I just wanted to know how steep the drop was first. Yeah. Yeah, it was probably quite steep, so it's up to you whether you want to uh, jump down. Alrighty, I should move to there and then proceed to throw my hand axe at it. Okay. Okay, roll to hit. 12. Okay, that does not hit, unfortunately. I'd like to use my two weapon fighting to throw another one. Okay, go ahead. Real life. Um, that does not hit either. Um, also, as you throw the hand axe towards the ambush drake, it slaps it away with its tail, and it kind of goes over to here. I Damn it. Gonna say it comes back at you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say shatters it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could be nasty and say it shatters it, but uh, I'll, I'll be nice this time. Okay. 
Okay, uh, anything yeah, else? I had my turn. I had my turn. Okay, in that case, uh, it's the Ambush Drake's turn again. Okay, the Ambush Drake, again, because it isn't really able to climb, is just going to, that's 25 feet to move to there. Oh, on the wrong screen, I need to go over to this one. There we go. Um, he'll go over to here, and then he has 40 foot of movement. So uh, that's 35. Actually, uh, actually, he'll be there, won't it? Yeah, because that's yeah. 20 foot. Yeah, so he's still not quite in range to attack there because I think he has to be within. I think that's 10 foot. Away. Yeah, that's 10 foot away, so he's not quite in range, but he's close. Okay, uh, Ambush Drake will have to end his turn there then. And with that, it is Marlow's turn again. Okay, Marlow seeing that the Ambush Drake has uh, come up, he is going to move to about here. Oh, need to. For some reason I can't select the token. Ah, oh, right, there we go. Okay, so he comes to about here, so he's got a good angle on, and he's going to attack with his longbow again. Okay, so um, I'll take the first roll. I think it rolled it for my other account as well. Okay, so yeah. So 13 uh, meets it, beats it. And it's not rolling damage again for so. Okay, I guess I'll have to do with that one. Uh, five piercing damage on him. Okay. Right, okay, and with that, that's the end of Marlow's turn. And it is now Arthur's turn. Hmm, to be key. Let's see if I can move. Okay, I will move up to just past that tree there. I should just about be able to have a line of sight on the Drake, so I'm going to launch another bolt at it. Oh, I should say another, it's the first time I've launched a bolt at it. Okay. Um, that does not hit. Um, I was just about to. Isn't that another thing? Um, Sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I should have line of sight there because I'm not shooting through the center of the tree. You can't, you can't like shooting around it. Uh, the, I would say on this occasion, the ambush drake is big enough that I'll allow that. Either way, I can get straight line of sight on it though. But it is still a big target regardless, so even if it was a bit closer, you would still probably be able to hit it where a smaller creature you wouldn't. But you don't pay anyway. Yeah. And my turn after reloading. <coughs> okay. And it is Gwen's turn. In that case, I'm guessing I can shoot past Zark. Um, what are you trying to do past Zark? Slingshot. Slingshot. Um, I would probably say Zach's quite a big fellow, so you'd probably have to maybe In that case, I'm move around to about here, to, I'd say. Yeah, I'm moving Roughly to where Marlow stood. Right, okay. Well, I didn't measure, but that has to be less than 30 feet um, movement. And yes, using slingshot now. Only apparently suddenly I don't have it anymore. Hmm. Sad. I should re-add it then. Oh, have you equipped it? Yeah, I had it. I had it equipped, but it suddenly doesn't show up anymore. Hmm. Well, let's go back into equipment and re-add it. Let me take a move. Oh, whatever. I'm, I'm just going to do the point thing again and try to start this out after the fact so we don't wait forever because it's completely disappeared from my equipment
Okay, 17 will hit. And a 7 will hit the Ember Strike. He doesn't really like the fire so much this time. And he starts to writhe around in pain as his scales catch fire for just a moment. So a little more than a tickle. A little bit more than a tickle this time. Okay, and uh, now it's Stellaman's turn. Alright. Move up to there. Can I shoot past Zyke from here? Um, like I said with Pemi, you'll probably just have to take a little step to the side. I'm a big guy. Oh, where was I before? You're directly in the middle of the tree there. Yeah. Okay, I can move to there. That's like 25 feet. Mm -hmm. Can I shoot from that? Um, uh, yeah, I would say so. Okay, I'm going to sling it. Uh, Ten does not help, unfortunately. Cool. It kind of just <laughs> like bounces off like a pebble harmlessly off one of its scales. Cool. Uh, anything else? Nope. Okay, now it's Zark's turn. I would like to run up to the thing and use Reckless Attack on it with my Great Axe. Which okay. means I'll get advantage on the attack yep. for uh, he If he lives, he gets attack advantage against you, doesn't he, on his next turn? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, yeah, with advantage, you hit. Okay, and uh, roll your damage. Okay, 12 damage. So... You walk up to the ambush drake and you just cleave into its side with the great axe. It kind of like jerks at the impact and then it just lies there motionless. <coughs> and uh, with that, um, the encounter is over. I'll recover my javelin from the drake's tail. Um, it kind and of then, like it kind of battered it towards uh, this general direction here. That was my hand. Out. That oh, was your my hand. hand out. Out, so ah, right, sorry. Um, Marlow yeah. will also Marlow will also um, go down and uh, try to recover some arrows. So I think it's usually half of what was used in battle. So not what... if they hit. Not they if they hit. hit. Right, uh, how many of them here? I think only one actually. Has... Yeah, so he probably couldn't get any. I'll retrieve uh, both of them. If you didn't actually hit with them, you can then roll to find them. Yeah, but, but I think you can only with other... them, you can outright get them back. I thought you could only recover up to half, even sort of if you didn't hit. Or is that a different ruling? It's, that might be uh, two different rulings in that case. Okay, well, I'll just say you recover as one arrow then. Just for some place I'll retrieve say. my two from that one, and that was what level looking for the other one. I'm going to have a closer look at the Drake, see if there's anything on him. Right. Just, like, harnessed, if there's anything harnessed to him. Um. So yeah, as I mentioned, as we were walking down, he did have a crate harnessed on the back, like the ambush Drake that you saw um, earlier on. So uh, let me just see what the role is for this again. So uh, oh, for some reason it's scrolling a bit slow. Right. Oh, uh, what should I do that bad way? I'll walk over to those two and tell them to move right. further out. Don't be near the road. Okay, I'm just going to make uh, a roll quickly here. Okay. Um. So Gwen, as you go over to the ambush strike, you notice that. The crate on its back is slightly open. It looks like they haven't had time to seal it. Let, I assume that you look inside. Yes, I right. look inside. Okay, uh, let me just make another roll over here. Right, okay, so upon looking inside of the crate, 
um, you see 30 gold pieces worth of um, like uh, cutlery and crockery. I'll take that. Okay. So, I mean, as I say, it's just quite valuable, so you could probably um, manage to fit. Oh, by me. So I fit that into your that pack. Um, does anybody want to search any of the other creatures? Yes. Okay, roll investigation for me, please. Okay, and uh, what did you roll there? Let me have a look. So you rolled a 14. Uh, oh, so, okay, I saw someone else as well. Okay, let me just get this. Right, okay, so on a 14, you notice on the kobold's side, he's got a little coin pouch. And in it, you find 20 copper pieces. Um, like the other kobolds you've encountered so far, he obviously dropped his weapon and um, another piece of paper. And if you were to read it, it's just the same instructions that you saw on the other kobolds that you've encountered recently. Do um, If I compare it to one of the notes I had took off the other one, is it the same writing? Like exactly the same. the same. Okay. Are they handwritten? 20. Um, they appear to be... In fact, uh, don't worry, if you wanted to make a roll to see if you can tell which of those is. What am I rolling? Uh, probably just investigation again. Okay, on a 10. ten. Uh, you can't quite tell the difference. Um, you're kind of like leaning to it being light printed. I mean, you could probably think considering like how many of these there are that they may have been printed, but you can't say with complete certainty if if they were handwritten or not. Okay. Okay. Anyone else investigating? Did these guys react to me coming and telling them to move? Uh, yes, they did. So I was just... Go okay, so um, uh, Nub and Sebastian did sort of see this and they saw the the drape move over and Sebastian just goes, oh, that must have been the damn food. So um, he heeds your instructions. As they move away, where did we telling them to move to? I was telling them to move further away from the road so they won't be seen. And when he mentions the food, I'm going to have a look in the back to see if there's anything that's generally exposed. Well, I mean, to be to fair, you, spell. you smell it quite close. It's just that the ambush... That's actually what it is then. Okay. In that case, I'll cast Mending on it. You cast Mending on the crate? Yep. Yeah, to seal it shut, I'm guessing. Yep. Okay, good. Um, so as you cast uh, Mending to seal the crate shut, the smell stops. Okay. Although it is still lingering in the area because it was pungent enough to get the ambush drake's attention. But it is it will dissipate over time, but it is still quite pungent mm -hmm. right now. So uh with that, um Marlo and um Sebastian will move further back. I don't have any more of the maps, okay. but I'll say Marlo? that they just Oh not Marlo, sorry, Nub and Sebastian. Oh. I get mixed up. Uh so yeah, they basically just move off the map and Sebastian just sort of uh, grips your hand quickly and just says thank you before um, retreating further into the forest. Since Delman was so interested in the scale last time, I tried to harvest some. Uh, no, I'm trying to harvest some, Pema. I'm trying to harvest some. So you're I've been trying, trying to say this for five damn minutes. <laughs> so you're going to harvest... Uh, in that case, I will assist you, Zach. <laughs> That's uh, okay then. Okay, so in that case, that'll be a survival roll with advantage. Considering you're getting help. Whilst they're rolling, I'll go back to where I was before to see if there's any sign of the dragon still there or anything else coming up the road. Um, Nothing else coming up the road. The dragon is still just circling the same area as it was before. Um, You can't really tell what its purpose is, but it doesn't appear to have reacted in any way to what's been going on here. It's too far away. Okay, uh, Okay. so with advantage, uh, yes, I would say that you succeed in doing the scales. I think we did 1d6 last time for the scales, didn't we? To see how many remember. you get. I think that's what we did. So uh, just roll 1d6. <laughs> 
one. Full okay. Scale. Well, uh, uh, I mean, you initially managed to extract the scales quite well, but as you pull them off, uh, I'm guessing you just, with your monolithic strength, break a few of them in half, and you just sort of managed to recover the one. Oops. So sorry. I'll hand it Next over to time you. Next time I'll be Zarg. <laughs> you did what? Sorry, I was mm. like yelling. I'll, I'll go over to Delman and hand it to him. Yeah. So I'll get this. That trial is showing him the scale. Good job. Well done. Are you giving? Are you giving me the scale? Or are you just showing me the scale? <laughs> I'm giving it, yeah. Oh, oh thank you. This is a fine specimen. I'm going to turn to the group and go, we need to get these beasts off the road. Um, Marlo, hide them in the bushes somewhere. Actually, yeah, I think um, I'll just uh, come and give you guys assistance. Where do you move them to? So get big one. Uh... Move up the move up the hill where we're going. How does it see up there? Just a little to the side behind the bushes. About where I am at. Yeah, I'll drag the ambush trick over there. Right, okay. So um are you kind of like moving them up on to the hill? Okay, I'll just... Onto the hill and behind the trees there. Yeah, like... okay. So even I'm... So, um, as Marlow's helping you do this, he notices just along the ridge that there were some boulders. And he kind of just kind of thinks on this for a moment before continuing to move the cold ball body to this spot over here. Did you say there were boulders on the ridge? Um, he just kind of like looks, he, lo he looks at the boulder for a moment, so if you're looking in his general direction you will notice this because he seems to be pondering on it. No, I'm too busy pulling this drake over, I think. Yeah. Okay, in that case... Um... Marla, you're seeing something? Uh, yes, I was just thinking if I'd not been so hesitant, we could have perhaps used one of these boulders here to to ambush uh, the the party without exposing ourselves. I, d I don't know, it was just a thought. Maybe. Keep thinking. It's a trivial comment. It had no bearing. We dispatched the foes. Do not worry. We probably need to continue to the town. Um, I have no idea what's going on down there, but I could imagine that the situation must be quite dire. Come on. Let's move. Lead on. And I move at a quick press pace. 